Hello, St. Luke family, and welcome to the weekend. June 28th, tomorrow, is the date that we had set to try and return to in-person worship. We've put out some communication about that this week, but I'm sure all of you are aware that there have been a lot of developments this week as well. I wanted to put out this announcement for all of you to let you know that we are going to go ahead with in-person worship tomorrow. And so you need to look back over those pieces of communication that have come out and pay close attention to them. The Christian church exists to bear witness to Jesus Christ. And so the worship of the church has always been a part of that witness. The church exists to offer that worship to the world, open its doors, to open its arms, and for us to open our hearts. And so our worship is open to people who wish to come. We, we worship out of our own relationship with God, but we also worship as a witness and as an invitation. Another thing that I think bears mentioning now at this time is the church's witness to human frailty. The church has a particular perspective on mortality and death and, and how we should view those things and approach those things, and that perspective is a part of our witness. Our approach to those things is not one of fear, and it's not one of escapism. It's one of hope and light and promise. I'm reminded of an event in the life of John Wesley. He was in the company of some German Moravian Christians, and John Wesley recounts in the midst of their psalm, he said, the sea broke over the ship, and it was as if the deep had already swallowed us up. Water poured down between the decks, and the mainsail was split entirely in two. And John Wesley said, a great screaming went up from all the English on board, but he said the German Moravians just calmly continued their worship. And he said after everything had finally come back to calm, he asked one of them, he said, were you not afraid? And this Moravian gentleman's response was, I thank God, no. And so John inquired further, he said, were not your women and children afraid? And he said, no, our women and children are not afraid to die. Now we need to find our balance in this time as the church. We don't need to be cavalier and careless with other people's lives, nor do we need to be cavalier and careless with our own lives. But we also have to find our place of calm resolve as well, that worship and the continuation of worship is part of our witness, that we have always known our lives are limited. We have always known our own mortality. And so we trust that mortality into the hands of God. Now, I'm not saying that any of us will be perfect in charting that course. We are going to return to worship. We are going to do it as carefully as we can and with as much consideration for all others as we can, but also with a calm resolve that in the midst of danger and uncertainty, we can do no better than to continue our worship of God. We can do nothing better for the world than continue to bear our witness to Jesus Christ and our willingness to trust our lives into his hands. First and foremost, if you are unsure, if you are uncertain, and absolutely, if you are unwell, then by all means, stay at home and worship with us online. If you are in close company or living quarters with someone else who is at risk or you yourself have a vulnerability, then absolutely stay at home. And we will do all we can as the staff of St. Luke United Methodist Church and as your clergy to continue to make sure that you can participate in worship. The other things we've asked people to pay close attention to are just those standard measures that we are all trying to live by right now. While you are here in this place and in each other's company, observe the appropriate amount of social distance. We will have people separated in where they sit on the pews more than the recommended social distance. But in your time of coming and going and just greeting and fellowshipping with each other, while you enter the building and while you exit the building, please, please take every measure to observe those same standards of social distance. Wash your hands more times than you think is necessary. After worship is over, as you're exiting the building, use some hand sanitizer. If you inadvertently grab a doorknob or a handle or a light switch somewhere, we're going to have all of those things wiped down before, between, and after the worship services. 
we will do our best to cover everything that can be covered. Now, there are a couple of other things that are a little harder to pin down, and particularly I want to say something about those things. Three of them, taking temperature when you come into the facility, two, wearing a mask while you're here, and three, what to do about congregational singing. The church very rarely ever ventures into using language of, of mandate or requirement or condition or restriction. In general, that is language that is foreign to the life of the church. To have faith in God to some degree is to embrace the liberty and freedom that God's grace gives you. And so it's very hard for the church to find a good way to talk about restrictions and mandates and still preserve that liberty and freedom that we deeply believe is a part of our relationship with God. But at the same time also say, you're not free and you're not at liberty to be inconsiderate of someone else's well-being. So we're trying to find that language that says, these things are strongly recommended. They really are not just recommended, but they are commended to you and to all of us as the safest ways to take care and consideration with other people. Having your temperature taken is just one of those ways of, of getting some more information about your own well-being. It's something we're going to suggest to you. It's something we're going to recommend to you. We all know that's not a perfect indicator of whether or not you have symptoms of COVID-19, but it is at least one additional piece of information at one moment on one day, so take advantage of it. Wearing masks while we are here together is also one of those things that we're not going to use the language of requirement or mandate, but we're going to strongly recommend it because that also is not something that is perfect, but it's at least one additional step or measure that can be taken while we are together in worship. And when it comes to congregational singing, we're pre-recording all of the hymns and all of the songs that we use during worship to keep people from singing aloud from the stage and possibly projecting further than they intend to or need to. But we're also asking the congregation to observe that same level of care and consideration. So if you stand during the music of the church and, and if you would like to participate in the song, then please wear a mask and just do so at a whisper or under your breath. What we don't want to do again is to let our liberty go over into a lack of consideration or care. We want personal liberty and we want personal freedom and we want to be able to praise God, but those things cannot infringe upon the well-being of another person. So these three things, congregational singing, wearing masks, and having your temperature taken. These are things that we're not going to use language of conditions or requirements or mandates. We're going to use the language of recommendation and strong suggestion. That These are three of the ways that we can keep our personal freedom and liberty, but at the same time not infringe upon someone else's well-being. And we will take our steps forward in this time as carefully as we can, but also with a calm resolve to continue the witness and the worship of the church in each other's presence. So thank you for taking a few moments to listen to this explanation. And no matter where you are, today or tomorrow, if you are with us here in the building or if you are still at home, you are a part of the body of Christ. You are a part of the family of St. Luke. And we are all one. And we will be worshiping together no matter where we are. So we look forward to tomorrow. And we hope that these thoughts will be a part of your preparations and a part of your planning if you are going to be here at St. Luke for worship tomorrow. God bless you all in the name of Jesus Christ.